Good afternoon, Alan Vandenberg here. Another episode of EQ for You, episode number eight. Today's episode is entitled, What is Wrong with the Book? What is Wrong with the Book? So, we're operating off of the concept that 75% of a, ter- a person or a team's success is not their IQ. So, I mentioned the book, EQ Killed the Radio Star. It is available on alanvandenberg.com. Uh, Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. So I'm at the top. I'm at the subject today. What is wrong with the book? EQ killed the radio star. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So I began in 2010 um, speaking, uh, 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 basically starting to publicly speak uh, to audiences all over the world about emotional intelligence and EQ. And uh, the company I was working for at the time. Uh, had had implemented and was in the process of implementing EQ and we were about year five when I started reaching out and, and, and talking to organizations and international conferences and at the encouragement of many of my friends and colleagues um, they said I should write a book so I had never written a book um, as a matter of fact uh, one of my biggest struggles in in school was uh, was English and writing um, I just was not very good at it um, but I, I became better, um, particularly in college, because I really had to. Um, so the book EQ Kill the Radio Star began as a research project. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the, the original title of the book was called Low Emotional Intelligence and the Destruction of Great Rock Bands. <laughs> and so what I was looking for was uh, um, just some data on uh, how successful rock bands basically imploded. Um, why sometimes great successful rock bands, um, you know, the lead singer or the guitar player would leave and go solo, if you will. So I was looking for those kind of things um, to add to the presentation. Uh, the book took me seven years and three ri- rewrites to complete the final draft that was sent to the publisher. Uh, after two different publishers and an expensive lawyer, <laughs> a lot of time, and energy, and focus. Um, it's why I'm telling you about the, the, this book. It, I spent a lot of time and energy and focus putting this book together. And uh, after uh, signing with the publisher, it was a year and a half later, a long, grueling process of you know, just the cover design and just rewrites and all those kind of things. And I finally had some books in my possession. So I began to uh, reach out to friends, colleagues, and, and family and say, hey, here's the book. Want to send it out to you? You know, would you like to buy one? All those kind of things, and um, and it was at that time I had a friend of mine, an old uh, 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 colleague and friend, that reached out to me. We are now working at different companies, and his name is Lance. And he reached out and he said, "Hey, would you like to go to lunch? I'd love to catch up and talk about the book and things that are going on and just see what's happening." So we met uh, downtown Tulsa at uh, Kilkenny's Irish Pub. If you've not been there, it's on Cherry Street, it's really good. And we met, uh, I was happy to see Lance. We began talking about uh, things that have been going on. Lance was very appreciative of uh, some of the things that, uh, some of the training and the EQ and the coaching that I had done with him uh, when he was at the company that we used to work together with. And so, to be honest, when we started talking about the book, I was feeling pretty good about this whole lunch conversation. This is great. I got a friend, we're catching up, we're talking about the book, it's really exciting, and, and um, I was feeling pretty good. And uh, so I told him uh, in the conversation, you know, most people, it's not a long book, it, it you know, takes about 45 minutes to an hour for most people to read it. And uh, at that point in time, he looked at me and he said, well, he said, it took me a couple hours to read it. And I kind of paused and thought, well, that's, that's really interesting that it, it took him a couple hours. I mean, Lance is a smart person, so I didn't didn't think it was slow, but I, I just didn't know what to think. I was I was kind of curious, to be honest. So we began to, to continue to laugh and have conversations, and I and I said, um, well, you know, we found some you know misspelling errors and some grammar issues, not a lot, but a few. And uh, he said, well, that's interesting. He said I found some as well. He said, would you be interested in, in seeing what I found? I said, absolutely. And, and he said, well, that's why it took me a couple hours to, 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 to read the book is um, I actually documented all the issues that I found inside the book. <laughs> so so I, uh, I said, I would love to hear what those are. Um, and so I took out a pen and a piece of paper and I was ready to write. And Lance says to me, Alan, you don't have to write it. I actually typed it into my phone and I will just text it to you. 
Oh boy, fun stuff, fun stuff. There are key moments in every conversation, especially when you're getting feedback. Um, and this was one of those moments. The person giving you feedback is really wondering, do they really want the feedback or not? And this what is wrong with the book feedback moment could have gone two ways. And it really just depending on how I wanted to react. I could have been very close minded, being defensive, saying to Lance, what do you mean? You spent two hours criticizing my book. You know, I spent seven years writing and rewriting that book. What are you doing? I could have done that. And, 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 and some people do that. They cannot receive that kind of constructive feedback. I chose not to do that. I, I it, very quickly um, said to Lance, I said, I would love to see your feedback. Please send it to me. It's the openness, the growth mindset. You know, the self-talk that says, oh, this is so, in, so neat that Lance spent two hours of his time frame just reading the book first off and then taking the initiative, which he didn't have to do, to document things that he saw in the book. Now, there weren't a lot of them, but, but uh, any of them was good for me just to know that, that they were out there. And he cared enough about the quality of the book to do that for me, and I was so appreciative. And Lance told me later, he goes, you know, when I mentioned, you know, would you like the feedback? He said, I was kind of looking to see how you were going to react. And immediately he said, oh, yeah, absolutely. And he was like, okay, I'm safe to go do this. I'm safe to give feedback. And as a leader, we need to be safe for people around us to give feedback, both good and not so good. And so we laughed a little bit around the conversation and, and I received the notes from Lance and I will tell you, I didn't change every single thing that he found in the book, um, but I did change a few, uh, actually about half of them, to be honest with you. I think there were eight total that he found. And so I wanna just present to you just some key takeaways from being open to feedback and growing your EQ skills. Listening to learn, which is a feedback me mechanism that we have, Listening to learn is an EQ tool that is absolutely critical. I had a friend, Mike, one time, we used to co-coach co and, and co-present across the, across the country. And he said, Alan, he said, if somebody is not able to listen to learn, all the other EQ skills they can't do. They can't have crucial conversations. They can't stay away from rat brain if they're not willing to listen to learn. And so that's, that's really the first uh, key takeaway. Second key takeaway is re receiving feedback as a choice. Everyone has the freedom to choose. Are you going to be open? Are you going to be closed? Are you going to choose to listen and understand what the feedback is or are you just going to be defensive? And whether you agree with the feedback or not, at least you know what they are thinking. And then the last key takeaway on being open to feedback and growing your EQ skills is Managing our self-talk and the stories that we tell ourselves during feedback. It's absolutely critical that we remain positive, that we self-talk in a way that says things like, they're really just trying to help. Or this amazing question, when somebody's giving you feedback, you're gonna blow them away if you do this. Ask them and say, oh, thank you so much for that feedback. Do you have any more? <laughs> now they may or may not, but just that willingness that you have to be open to even more feedback is so critical to your growth um, in, in emotional intelligence. So hopefully this was helpful today. Again, reach out on, um, on social media platforms and anyone we have, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn. Please give me a shout out. I'd love to hear from you what you think about this episode of what is wrong with the book EQ Killed the Radio Star. So have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.